Hello and welcome back to the part 2 of this tutorial series. In this video, we will set up a Spring Boot Cloud App application which will work as a publisher for sending the messages on the SQS. We will be using Eclipse with STS plugin. We will use the Spring Boot Starter Project Wizard to create our project. We will use modules like AWS Core, AWS Messaging, Spring Web and Lombok. During this application creation, we will configure this application to use SQS URL which we created in video 1. Implement a client module using Spring and AWS Java SDK. Implement a functionality or capability of sending the message on the, on the queue. And finally test this application. So here we are in Eclipse and let's start creating our application using the Spring Boot Starter Project Wizard. So we will go to the other go down and look for spring boot spring starter project click next we will call our project aws sqs publisher we will use gradle java 8 packaging jar and i'm going to change this group name to com.aws.sqs and same is going to happen to the package moving on here we need to select the dependencies we were looking for. So we will go to Cloud AWS, select AWS Core and AWS Messaging. We will use Web. From Spring Core. And uh, we will also use Lombok. And finish. So this will create a Spring Boot a project for us with name AWS SQS Publisher. So now that we have our project ready, let's explore some of its components. So we have our main Java folder, we have our main resources folder, and here we have all the Gradle, uh, Gradle dependencies which came with this project. So we got uh, Spring Cloud AWS Core, we got Spring messaging, we got Java SDK for SDK, uh, SDK core, we got the Java SDK for SQS. And this is what, what all we need to accomplish our functionality of pushing or sending those messages onto the SQS. So let's start by creating our first package, which will be uh, dot client. And here we will define our client class. And before that, I'm going to rename this application properties to application YAML. I like YAML better. And we will start defining some of the properties in our YAML file. And let's create our first class. It will be AWS Demo SQS Client. This class will be a Spring Manage class, so I'm going to annotate it with component. And since it's a configuration, I'm defining it as a singleton. I want this class to be final, so I don't want it to get extended. All right. And in this class, we will have some properties like uh, AWS region private string um, AWS SQS URL and few more so for now we will define we will start defining these properties in our application YAML file before we further this class let's go ahead and define some properties so we're defining server and we're defining the port of it and we're going to use 8050 and now we want to define some of the cloud properties AWS region 
static us east we need this because we will be running our application locally and the and since the on the, the spring boot will not be able to determine where is the application running in the cloud so we have to define a static region it's saying that hey my consider my local as us east one and do not configure it automatically so i'm saying that auto is false and uh, we are going to define property for sqs url for it and the url is the same which we uh, the same sqs we created uh, using the uh, aws management console so i'm going to copy that here and this is the url for the sqs for now we're going to stick with these properties and try to use these properties while defining our client so let's move back to the client So this will be at the rate value to read it from the uh, properties and cloud aws dot region dot static. And same will be with this. In this it will be SQS URL. And uh, quickly we're going to create get us for these things. And same for this guy. So now we have the required parameters. Let's try to define a, a very simple Amazon SQS client, a very basic Amazon SQS client. So I'm going to say private Amazon SQS basic SQS client. And this will be coming from Amazon's SDK. And we will surely have a cater for it. And once this class is, uh, you know, is initialized by spring, we want to initialize this client too. So I'm going to create an init method and within this init method we will try to create a basic client equal to Amazon SQS client builder class and we will use the standard method it's a static standard method on this and with region the region we have just defined in our yaml dot so that is all what we have to do to create a very basic a uh, amazon sqs client using spring boot and you know amazon's sdk and uh, there we go okay so this class is almost complete but we have to understand another concept that how the credentials will be passed to this client because so far we have not defined any credentials and how they will be passed on to this client while connecting or while sending messages uh, to the queue. As you can see we are not providing any credentials to the above client at line number 31. Then how the credentials will be handled? To answer that question Spring and AWS have a mechanism called AWS Credentials Provider Change. The chain looks for credentials in multiple places in an order. First, it looks into the environmental variables, then it looks into Java system properties, then it looks to the credentials profile file, then it tries to look into ECS container credentials, and finally it tries to look into instance profile credentials. If any of these five locations have a valid credential, those credentials will be used while making the uh, calls to the AWS web services uh, for our for our demo since I'm using a Windows uh, Windows system I'm going to define uh, these credentials in the environmental variables we have to create two new variables in our environmental variables AWS access key ID and AWS secret access key and once we have defined these variables with valid values and these values will be the same of the user which has read write access for the SQS and when the application starts, the AWS credential provider chain will pick those values from the environmental variables and pass and provide these credentials to the client 
and then using that client we can make calls to the AWS web services this holds goods for most of the AWS SDK and uh, and we're going to use the same mechanism while pushing these messages or sending these messages to our Amazon SQS using this basic SQS client so your first variable is AWS access key ID here you will pass the access key ID which you will get from AWS management console for the user and your second variable will be AWS secret access key again this value will be the value which you will get from AWS management console for the user and make sure to provide privileges to the user for read and write on the SQS and once you have defined both these values the AWS credentials provider chain will pick up these values at application startup and pass it to the basic SQS client and we will be able to successfully send messages on the SQS our next step is to put this client to some use let us go and create another class I'm going to create a new package first so that will be our service package and inside this service package I'm going to create a new class I'm going to call it AWS demo message publisher service and once again this class will be uh, spring managed and uh, I'm going to annotate it with uh, at the rate component okay and uh, this will have the client private AWS demo SQS client I'm going to put it basic SQS client and we are going to use at the rate auto wired and now we're going to create a very simple message uh, a simple method to uh, send messages to the SQS I'm going to call it send message and we will see how are we going to put this to use so we're going to use client dot get basic client dot send message and we are using this method signature where we have to give pass in the uh, URL for the queue and that we all already have in our client and a message body for now I'm going to just type in hello but uh, when we will be running it multiple times it will be tough to identify our messages so I'm going to do this I'm going to create a very simple and quick logic to make them unique int i equals zero and uh, after every run we're going to increment the value of i and uh, and gonna append the value of i here so every time this runs a unique value of i will be appended to the message and that's that's how we're going to identify the message uh, on the sqs so now we want the messages not to be sent once right we want the messages sent to be sent multiple times so for that i'm going to use uh, spring annotation scheduled and uh, at a fixed rate so it takes an argument for every second so that is a uh, thousand milliseconds let's see what this guy returns this returns us a send message result okay and what are we going to do we're going to log that message so s l f 4 j annotation this is from lombok and now we get log dot info published message and we're gonna get result dot 
get message ID. And this way, whenever a message is published to the queue, we'll be able to get the message ID back and see it in the logs. So, so far what we have done is we have created an SQS client, we have configured it with the SQS URL, uh, the credentials will be provided by AWS credentials provided chain, and we have this service which will, which has this method, uh, method send message, which will run at a fixed rate of one second, uh, at, at an interval of one second. So every one second we should be able to see a message going out to the queue, and the fashion would be hello zero, hello one, hello two, in, in that fashion, uh, for how many you know uh, seconds we are running this and to enable this at the date schedule we have to go to our main class and we have to enable the scheduling so use this annotation and we're all set all right so it's now time for us to run this application and see if what we are claiming is true or not now it's time for us to put this application to test. So let me start it. Run as Spring Boot app. And now with every second we should see a message going to the SQS and the message ID getting console, uh, logged out on the console. Okay. And here you can see that we have messages going to the SQS every second. And in, in, in show. In a while we'll see these messages on the sqs i'm just going to get a few more seconds down so that we can see a good number of messages there and we'll see the fashion like hello zero hello one hello three coming on to the sqs so i think now this is a good amount of messages published let's go to the sqs and see how they look there so here we are in the aws management console as an as as you can see we have 31 messages available to be read so let us see some of those messages. I'm going to start polling. And as you can see, the messages are here. We have hello 0, hello 3, hello 5, and up to hello 30. It should be somewhere here, hello 30. So we were successfully able to process uh, or send 31 messages onto this queue, and we are able to uniquely identify them by looking at the content of the message, which uh, is in a fashion of hello 0 and uh, up to 30. With this, we conclude this video demo number two. Here we were able to set up a Spring Boot application and using AWS and, and Spring capabilities, we were able to send messages onto the queue. We learned how AWS credentials are managed. And finally, we were able to seize those messages on the AWS management console on the queue. In the next tutorial, which is part three, we will be uh, we will be creating a Spring Boot Cloud application which will read these messages from the queue and hence trying to establish that pub publisher subscriber model and see how this uh, how SQS can be used in these kind of integrations. Thank you. See you in the next video.